You're watching the Business Channel, creating business class programs. Fraser is a Danish company that manufactures pressure, temperature and flow control products for heating and cooling systems for building. And the UK MD is Stephen Hart and he's with me now. Hello to you. Good morning. Now, can you tell me what are the main uh, products that you're selling in, in this country? We make uh, flow and temperature control valves. Uh, they go into uh, waterborne, what we call hydronic heating and cooling systems, particularly in medium to large buildings. Now, how do those products help in saving energy and reducing carbon emissions? One of the uh, modern uh, trends in heating and cooling systems is the use of inverter drives on pumps and uh, what we call two-port control valves on uh, things like fan coils and air handling units. These are fine and great devices, which mean there is a potential for the uh, energy consumption of the pumps to be reduced when the system's not fully occupied or when you haven't got extremes of outside air temperature. The problem, though, is that the pumps speeding up and slowing down and the valves opening and closing causes all kinds of uh, chaos in the pipe system and we need what we call pressure independent devices which can increase or decrease uh, their characteristics or their resistance to control flow around the building effectively and efficiently. Now we tend to think of cooling and heating as being bad for the environment but how are you making them slightly better for the environment? There is an expectation of a comfortable indoor climate particularly in the workplace so I think that's here to stay. Um, with modern uh, buildings, particularly the, the fabric of buildings now, is so efficient in terms of insulation that many of our buildings um, are, are net heating. So they, they need to be cooled just to create a comfortable working environment. So we're stuck, I'm afraid, with, with the need to air condition public spaces or public indoor spaces. Um, however, it's very important that we only run the plant room equipment, such as boilers and chillers, and circulating pumps just as much as necessary to make the climate comfortable. Historically, we've had problems in our uh, building services of overrunning equipment because it was a convenient way to design systems. Our products help maximize the indoor climate control whilst minimizing the energy consumption of the building plant. Now we've got this combination at the moment of high energy prices, we need to reduce our carbon emissions and also flexible working so a lot of people aren't in the office for a lot of the time. And how do you think that these things are going to combine to make buildings different in five or ten years time? The flexible working is going to impact in particular the, the building occupancy. Now the thermal load on a building, and that's uh, how much heating or cooling needs to be generated to, to keep the climate controlled, is going to vary with the number of bodies in the building. And the more diverse between high numbers and then low numbers, the more variation that that air conditioning system has to be able to provide. Uh, so I think there is going to be an increased need to ensure that buildings work efficiently at what we call part load condition, rather than only being focused on operating at peak load demand. Now, are your products quite sophisticated in sort of detecting how many people or how much heat is being generated in a particular room or a particular area and then adjusting it accordingly? What we do is we are able to, with our devices, just through mechanical springs, pistons, uh, uh, capillary tubes, uh, enable uh, the control valves, uh, which do open and close in response to uh, room sensors and thermostats on the wall, uh, we're able to filter out all the kind of system noise that happens when valves open and close and pumps speed up and slow down. And if we can get rid of all this background noise, then we can make sure that the control valve only opens when the temperature in the space needs to be changed, not continually opening and closing to try and stabilise the air temperature. Now, how do you think that your company can help SIBSI members achieve their objectives? There is what I call the, the, the comfort and energy balance. Uh, it's actually quite easy to make uh, buildings that have comfortable indoor air climate, and it's actually quite easy to make buildings that don't use much energy when maintaining a climate. Um, the problem is trying to achieve the two things at the same time. And our products particularly enable maximised uh, climate control with minimised energy performance from the equipment inside the building. Do you have a case study example of your work and how it's uh, helped reduce energy costs? One, most recently, is we've been uh, uh, 
performing uh, some comparative testing between our modern pressure independent control valve and a more conventional uh, automatic temperature control valve across in one Canada Square, which is the main tower building at Canary Wharf. Here we were able to, to install the two different uh, products on two air handling units on the same floor and we were able to measure the cooling performance of both air handling units as they were controlled by the valves and we were also able to measure the energy input for these air handling units as well as the stability of flow and temperature control. The results that we saw were uh, clearly encouraging and showing that one of the key benefits of our product is to really maintain very very good climate control without ever allowing more flow than necessary through the control valves. Do you think that retrofits and refurbs are the most realistic option for most companies trying to reduce their emissions? Refurbishment of buildings is increasingly important. Um, we know that the majority of the buildings that are going to be occupied in, by 2050 are already designed and built. So if we're going to address some of the carbon emissions uh, objectives, then we've got to take on our current building stock, whether that's residential dwellings or, or commercial uh, buildings. So we definitely see that um, retrofit is the priority now for the building services sector. Now based on your experience, are there any lessons that you could pass on to companies who are trying to be greener at the moment? We can see uh, through our experience um, that we should of course be buying the most energy efficient pump or the best condensing boiler or the best device available there on the market. But the reality is it's less to do with the components and much more to do with how you integrate the system together. So I would encourage a holistic approach on your hydronic or your heating and cooling systems because uh, several studies, uh, including one by the building research establishment last year, has demonstrated that upwards of 70% of pump energy savings can be made just by combining existing technology together in a more integrated way. Now, do you have any views on what the government should be doing more to enable a low carbon economy? It seems to me that the lack of cash is the problem right now. The case studies that we've done uh, recently uh, at, uh, at a town hall building in northern Germany demonstrated that we were able to uh, actually take out of commission one of the 200 kilowatt condensing boilers there. We were able to reduce the number of pumps that were circulating and we were able to, to reduce the pump energy by about 50% and the uh, gas energy required by about 15%. This all added up to something like an 18 month payback. My view is we can afford to do this retrofit but we need the available funds to fund it in the short term. The longer term will pay for itself. Well Stephen Hart, UK MD of Fraser, thank you very much. Thank you.